Hello and welcome to Pages Top Ten. Today we will present you top ten films about loneliness, solitarity, and desolation. Some of the following films and the performances have long stayed in our minds, while others easily went under the radar. I want to start out this list with Lane Ramsey's film released in 2017, titled "You Were Never Really Here." In my opinion, this film is very much underrated. Besides from a great narrative, film is full of simply beautiful shots which portray the sadness of the main character. The protagonist is Joe. Who has passed full of violent acts is traumatized and is able to commit murders without hesitation. At one point, the film might seem like a thriller. However, the movie is about a man with a shattered life who is all alone to carry the burden of his past. The next spot is for Sofia Coppola's spectacular film *Lost in Translation*. There are two main characters in the epicenter of the movie, Bobby and Charlotte. They meet each other in Tokyo. Okay, sure. Sorry, what were you saying? Nothing. It's okay. I'll call you later. Okay. Okay. Have the best time. You know. Just call me when you get back. Okay. Bye. Bye. Love you. It's interesting that both of them are married, yet their loneliness is palpable throughout the large city even more. They have a superficial and shallow relationships with their significant others, and their accidental meeting proves that they are more valuable to each other than the ones who they thought they were destined for. The film falls under the romance genre, although romantic relationships are something of a secondary meaning here. It's rather to realize that even when you think you've got somebody you should be happy with, it takes few moments in your life to realize that you might be completely alone. Manchester by the Sea belongs to the category of the films where the main reason of the protagonist's anguish is tragedy that happened in the past. Casey Affleck's character has a big story, which is the main cause of his troubled thoughts and unhinged days. The narrative is deftly expressed through the camera lens and techniques the director uses here. The film starts out with flashbacks of the past, and afterwards, film constantly jumps back and forth in the present. This is the perfect way to convey emotions of the character. I can't help but notice the dull colors that is continually shown throughout the whole film, referring to the mental state of Lee Chandler. After the tragedy, the person might be alive and unarmed physically, although same doesn't go for the soul. Lee is doomed for such a fate. My heart was broken. It's always gonna be broken. But I know yours is broken too. But I don't have to carry. I said things that I should fucking burn in hell for no. what I said to you. No. It, it no, was no, just no, 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 Randy, no. Even though we see the glimpses of the hope in several scenes, we realize that overcoming such memories of the past is simply impossible for him. Coen Brothers' 2013 film that stands out from their works is Inside Leo and Davis. The main character is a musician, a regular type, one we meet on a daily basis. This is a man who carries the weight of being lonely and whose soul is exhausted from everyday routine. But、uh, it's not going anywhere. I'm tired. You're tired.、Uh... I'm so fucking tired. I thought I just needed a night's sleep, but it's it's more than that. He tries to earn living with his not so lucrative profession. However, his desolation is slowly eating him away. 
It's not a coincidence that he has to find a shelter throughout the film. Home and shelter represents the symbol of peace and tranquility where someone is awaiting for you. That's what Lewa lacks. Another symbolic meaning is that despite his poor income, he tries to take care of the cat, one that doesn't even belong to him. We can draw a parallel to Andrei Tarkovsky's movie where the dog approaches and lays down next to the person on the ground. This shows us that even after all the tormented moments people have to endure, it's still worth to live, take care and love living beings. In Aldous Huxley's book, Brave New World, we see the future where the technological advancement made human resources and interactions obsolete. There is no need for socializing anymore. This 2013 film titled Her is special in its own way, depicting technological future as a sign and a cause for loneliness, having a connection with Upper Mansion Book. Joaquin Phoenix's character, Theodore, is very melancholic. Having a lack of communication, he soon purchases an operational system to help him out. However, he soon falls in love with it. It seems like that the director agrees with the fact that in the peak of technological evolution, there will be a great deficit of human interactions. For people like Theodore, times like this will feel even worse. The performance from Phoenix and emotional state of Theodore creates a magical atmosphere, making the film take sixth spot in our list. The next spot goes to Francois Truffaut's sensational film, The 400 Blows. The main character is Antoine Donnell. It's an interesting fact that the film is autobiographical and is considered to be very sensitive matter for the director. It's a known fact that the childhood is the best period and phase that we go through. However, The 400 Blows proves us otherwise. The world depicted in the movie is harsh and vile towards the child. Antoine's parents don't understand his interests. The child learns that he should survive on his own. This is what Truffaut writes in the book called Antoine Donnell's Adventure. Back then, I was sure that adult's life was full of coincidences and child's life was filled with misdeeds. While washing the dishes, if I would break a plate, I would hastily take the broken parts out on the street so others wouldn't know what happened. While in the same afternoon, I would hear a conversation between my parents and their friends on how they crashed their car, yet they were full of joy and happiness discussing it. In order to better portray Antoine's loneliness, Truffaut shows us views on the massive city, referring and underlining how tiny and insignificant Antoine's life is. The next spot in our list goes to Andrei Tarkovsky's Kalthik film, which was released back in Soviet era. And even though most of the films back in that day were getting banned due to the strict censorship policies, his masterpiece was able to see the light of the day. The reason why this happened is connected to Stanley Kubrick's space odyssey. Even throughout the war, Soviet Union tried to compete with other skillful directors and they had an ambition for a healthy competition. The main character of the movie, Chris, is located on a space station near the planet Solaris. The planet itself is mysterious in its own nature, materializing people's intrinsic fears. Chris tries to escape his own loneliness and pangs of guilt keep dampening his spirit. However, ultimately the planet brings him to a cathartic state. Ingmar Bergman's film, released in 1957, titled Wild Strawberries, translates to Field of Strawberries in Swedish language. It also has a secondary meaning, which is a forgotten, abandoned place. The main protagonist of the movie is an old doctor named Isik, who goes on a journey from one city to another to get an honorable reward. This is also a journey for his soul, reminiscing the past and analyzing how desolate he is. Isaac often sees dreams filled with illusions, which is reference to Freud's psychoanalysis by a director, and those dreams ultimately helps him to reflect on himself. The protagonist comes to realization that despite his achievements, he still remains a lonely spirit. The scene where he gets the award is very short, underlining the fact that it's of a minor importance. 
every milestone is negligible because Isaac feels an estrangement, loneliness, and fear of death at the end of his life. The second place goes to Michael Mann's film, Heat. The genre of the given movie is thriller and crime, although we can clearly say that the film is about reclusive lifestyle. The two main protagonists are played by Robert De Niro and Al Pacino, standing on the opposite sides of the law, yet their lifestyles are very similar and comparable. The following dialogue proves this opinion. I do what I do best. I take scores. You do what you do best, trying to stop guys like me. In other thriller films, characters are mostly devoid of their own life outside of being a cop or a criminal as if it simply does not exist. That's what makes the film unique, a trade with their in-depth interests and emotions. They're both lost in a world where despite their ranks, loneliness is something they both share and struggle with. The first place goes to Martin Scorsese's masterpiece, Taxi Driver. Despite the fact that there are numerous parallels that can be drawn from the film that are relevant to the real world, the main line of it is still being a lonely person who tries to find a place for himself. The protagonist of the film, Travis, who starts out as a taxi driver due to his sleeping problems, is one of the most loneliest characters in cinematography. Loneliness has followed me my whole life, everywhere. Bars and cars, sidewalks, stores, everywhere. There's no escape. I'm God's lonely man. In order to show Travis's solitariness, Scorsese uses various methods. For example, in this particular scene, when even the camera leaves Travis and we see an empty corridor. Travis hates the neighborhoods that are infamous with their crime rate. However, he still drives through them in order to serve customers, which is a sign of self-destruction. Travis Bickle is so isolated from the society that simple communicative skills seem like a daunting task for him. At the first glance, this film is a crime genre, although Travis's actions, which are vastly shown throughout the second part of the movie, are more of a secondary meaning. And the definition it carries is that a human is all alone in this world and that being lonely is a natural state for us. Thank you for watching our video. If you wish to see more content like this, please consider to like the video and subscribe to our channel. It will be greatly appreciated and it will help us grow. Until next time.